is 16 and 0 with a perfect split of eight knockouts and eight submissions. Mm. That man mm. gives me chills. He is the women's pet and the men's regret. Laura Sanko's forbidden crush, and most importantly, he's the one who snaps necks and crushes skulls while collecting checks. Shavkat Rachmanov. Mm. That man mm. gives me chills. Recently, he's gained a lot of hype for having a 17 wins with zero losses MMA record. But that's not even the most impressive part. What's really astonishing is his 100% finish rate, having finished all his opponents with a nice balance ratio of eight knockouts and nine submissions. Currently ranked at number six in the UFC welterweight division, he's potentially at just one more win to get the chance to prove he's the best in the world at 170 pounds. Shavkat's UFC career. His long-awaited UFC debut came in October 24, 2020, against the battle-tested veteran Alex Cowboy Oliveira. Alex makes sure to welcome Shavkat to the UFC with a nice placed right hand that woke him up. Oh my goodness, already a big dark right hand by Oliveira. Oliveira was being light and smooth on his feet, but Shavkat started finding his rhythm and catched Oliveira with a nasty knee to the chest and followed up with some combinations. Toyo tires, the official tire of the UFC. Oh, and a big knee to the body from Rekmanov. Counter left from Cowboy. After spending a good three minutes in the clinch against the cage going back and forth, Oliveira tries to take Shavkat down with a double leg but makes a fatal mistake. He exposes his neck to a guillotine specialist and pays the price. Shavkat showed that the hype was real, adding this beautiful finish to his collection. Oh, guillotine! Right, Manov, he's got a great guillotine. But in his next fight, he'd get mashed against somebody that would pose a real danger for him. Michel Prezeres. Next, Shafkat gets mashed against another veteran in Michel Prezeres at UFC Vegas 30. It was a dangerous fight for Shafkat. Even though he's small, he's like a tank that packs dangerous power in his hands. Well, we that... just said it, right? I just said it in the Telestrator. When the guy's too long, you kick. Yep. You can get there faster. Ooh. Ooh. But the first round ends with no clear winner yet. Shavkat starts the second round throwing his well-known spinning kick, landing on the body this time, almost warning Prezeras about what was about to come. Rachmanov starts it with a jab, spin kick. Does he open it up here in the second frame? Shavkat starts getting his range and puts the pressure on Prezeras. He again throws a spinning back kick that barely combs Prezeras' hair and follows up with a nasty knee to the body. That he's not really, oh! Ooh. Oh, oh Prezeris didn't like the... Oh, step in knee for Rachmanov, Prezeris. They hit the ground and Shavkat punishes Prezeris with a nasty ground and pound. Two minutes into the round, he gets the neck. And guess what happens next? Now he's getting behind him. If he can get that right... Oh, he's got it under the neck. Prezeris is... Oh, my God. There's the tap. Wow, wow. Yep, you got it right, indeed. After defeating the two Brazilian veterans and proving his worth, Shavkat wanted to prove himself against younger blood. But hey, be careful what you wish for. Carlston Harris. At UFC Fight Night 200, Shavkat gets matched up against another hot new prospect called Carlston Harris. Harris was known for his good jiu-jitsu and good striking as well. Fight starts, and while Michael Bisping talks about Shavkat's hype, the Nomad starts finding his range early in the fight. But there is a, a lot of hype around Shavkat, a lot of people talking about him. Not long after, Shavkat throws his first signature spinning kick that lands good on the body of Harris and follows up with a nice left hook and a knee to the body. Many openings to be counted. Ooh. Spin kick to the body. And that was a powerful kick. Oh, Rachmanov sets in the moment here. Shavkat continues with the pressure and he throws another spinning kick, this time landing on Harris's head that stumbles into the canvas. He smells the blood and follows up with ground and pound sealing the deal. Oh! Spin kick sets him down and now trying to end it. Big ground and pound here. Harris. Oh, that's gonna do it. After another finish for the Kazakh hot prospect, the UFC decides that he's ready to break into the top 10. <laughs> and what a worthy and dangerous opponent they gave him. Neil Magny. Now it's the time to fight one of the toughest welterweights and a lanky fighter called Neil Magny, who stands at six foot three with an overwhelming reach of 80 inches. Magny holds the UFC record with most wins in the UFC welterweight division, even surpassing one of the greatest of all time in Georges St. Pierre. Magny was known for welcoming and derailing hot prospects like Shavkat. Could he do the same this time? 
Fight starts and Magni throws a lazy kick. Shavkart takes advantage and takes him down, punishing him with good ground and pound. It's used to reach advantage, but still that has been negated. Magni is able to defend and scrambles out, but he gets dominated in the ground for the most part of the first round. Second round starts and Shavkat puts the pressure on as he lands his favorite kick, followed by a body lock tripping Magni down. Neil needs to abandon that move. Magni. Shots here from Rakwana. Magni defends good and scrambles out, but in the process he makes a fatal mistake. He offers his neck to Shavkat and he doesn't hesitate on taking it. Magni. Shots here from Rakwana. With this dominant win, Shavkat proved he was ready for the top dogs of the division. But his next opponent did something to Shavkat that nobody else had been able to do before. Jeff Neal. For this fight, Shavkat got a well-deserved spot at the UFC 285 pay-per-view card, headed by, who many consider the greatest of all time, John Jones. Shavkat was matched against Jeff Hands of Steel Neal. He'd well earned this nickname by finishing top-tier contenders like Nico Price, Mike Perry, and Vicente Luque. The tension was palpable in the build-up of the fight, anticipating the great treat of a fight that we were about to get. First round starts with good exchanges from both warriors. But three and a half minutes into it, Shavkat lends a head kick that wobbles Jeff and follows up with his signature follow-up knee to the body. But he's able to weather the storm, and even though the first round finishes with Shavkat putting the pressure on Jeff, this one reminds Shavkat why he needs to be careful with him. Как минимум паритета, как максимум Шавкат смотрится лучше. И Нил очень тяжело попадал в первом раунде. Second round starts, and Jeff starts finding success with combinations. Танцы, фронт кик, подбирается поближе, и какая двойка на встречу от Нила! Левым боковым попадает американец. Шавкат responds with an uppercut, followed by some nasty elbows. Не получилось. Далее Шавкат продолжает идти вперед. Это уже становится принципиальным моментом. Именно перебить Джеффа Нила. The second round ends being a very competitive one. But in the third, Shavkat starts being a little reckless, losing the respect for Jeff's hands of steel, and he makes sure he makes him pay. That was the first time Shavkat was stunned in a fight in his career and in some sort of trouble. But he keeps his composure and survives. Now is his turn and delivers a powerful straight right hand down the pipe that hurts Jeff. Shavkat smells the blood and keeps the pressure on and with less than a minute to go, he catches Jeff with a standing bulldog choke that forces him to tap at the last second, but not avoiding him falling unconscious. Эндшпиль получается за Шавкат, Мон заходит на удушающий. Развязка близка, как прохаска против Тейшеры. Все! Сдается! Это победа удушающим! Even in his toughest fight to this date, Shavkat showed us that besides skill, he also possesses the heart and willing determination of a Kazakh warrior. Final thoughts. So, who do you think is next for the Nomad? Do you think it should be the champion, Leon Edwards? Do you think he's got what it takes to be the king of the division? Do you think Laura Sanko gets divorced and goes after the Nomad? Well, let us know in the comments and let's keep an eye on this exciting contender. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the notification bell so you won't miss videos like this one. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, fight fans.